Charles von Fremd asked Dr. Charles Sheldon of the President's Space Council how this U.S. effort compares with past Russian successes. It's a very real advance over the 1962 and 63 Soviet experiments. Uh, they were the first to bring ships fairly close together, but they never completed the kinds of maneuvers that uh, we will uh, hopefully see uh, with this flight uh, to bring uh, ships actually in very close position to each other. What you're saying then is that the Soviets on those two occasions lacked the capability of changing orbital flight plans. That's right. Yeah, on the 62 case, they made a direct ascent to bring the ships uh, within about three and a half miles of each other, and that was all they could do, and the ships then drifted apart. In 1963, they came within three miles, but they were on a crossing kind of uh, orbit uh, where there was no chance whatsoever of uh, maneuvering close up. Well, if the Soviets had this very close capability, and after all, three miles within two 17,000 mile an hour vehicles in space is pretty close, why do you think they have not achieved the capability which we hope for in Gemini 7 and 6? I think this is a, a real question, a mystery, that hasn't been satisfactorily answered. With the kind of demonstration that they did so long ago, we certainly thought that before this time we would have seen it. It certainly suggests that uh, uh, the present vehicle combination that the Russians have been using does not have uh, within it the capability to do this needed maneuvering or the docking uh, of actually bringing two ships together to lock them uh, into uh, one combination. I'm not trying to put you on the spot because we never know what tomorrow morning's papers or broadcasts are going to say. <coughs> Excuse me, but is it your feeling now, sir, that uh, the Soviets do not have this close rendezvous and docking technique with, with which we are pursuing in the Gemini program? Well, uh, all I can say to that is that they haven't demonstrated it, that we know. Uh, when we will see it uh, is something that only the future will, uh, future will answer. I certainly think it's going to come along very shortly because it's such a logical extension of space technology and it also is one which they have been promising us uh, for some little time. Well, maybe without sounding super patriotic or chauvinistic, maybe this is the day for that even. Uh, I think we can safely say that in all aspects of uh, space exploration, manned space and unmanned space flight, the United States is now, as of this moment at any rate, in the lead. We have done more in the three major space races now than have the Soviets. We have, uh, in the race in pure scientific research, put up far more scientific satellites than have they. In the matter of practical applications in space, we have done far more with our communications and weather and uh, other uh, satellites, including the unfortunately nicknamed Spy in the Sky, Samos, which uh, takes uh, uh, pictures of the ground around the world. Uh, and now in manned space flight, although still behind in the size of the capsules, the spacecraft we can put up, we're putting more sophisticated spacecraft up than they are, true spacecraft that can maneuver. We proved it today. They can maneuver and meet up in space. The biggest step forward since the first man went out there. And I think that, uh, well, I was about to uh, say that, that I, I think that all of us in the uh, space uh, who have been covering space uh, are particularly glad that one Wally Shira could have a part in this historic day. He's a favorite of all of ours, and in a moment I'm going to ask uh, Chuck Van Fremd, who's down in Houston and an old-timer in the space coverage, to talk about it, Wally, with me. But right now, Paul Haney at Houston. We uh, are estimating here that Shira and Stafford used 175 pounds of fuel to complete that rendezvous. That's a figure from the terminal phase initiation point on into uh, the actual rendezvous point some six to ten feet apart. Uh, we show spacecraft six with 365 pounds of fuel remaining. I'll emphasize that that is a very conservative usage of fuel to achieve what those two achieved in uh, at last 130 degrees from the southern tip of Africa to a point out over the western Pacific. We were prepared to expend uh, at least twice that much in order to conduct that rendezvous attempt. Here now is some tape conversation of the two talking to each other, occasionally talking to the Rosenot Victor uh, off the south coast, uh, off the coast of South America. Uh, 
Flight RKV, voice check. Go ahead. Roger. What'd you say? I was just having a voice check. Uh, uh, Roger, read you loud and clear how many? Loud and clear. RKV. News color coverage of Gemini 6 and Gemini 7 will continue in a moment. What have we got? Today's largest selling cold medication at your pharmacy. One sad note to hear today in this space program, uh, the aircraft, the private plane in which uh, Dr. W. Randolph Lovelace, uh, the head of the uh, space medicine program, had been flying with his wife and a private pilot from Aspen, Colorado to Albuquerque, was found smashed into a mountainside near Aspen, no sign of life. However, elsewhere in the space program, a day of triumph for America as Gemini 7 and Gemini 6 achieved the first manned spacecraft rendezvous.